For the past two years, we have been collecting and researching public records surrounding the numerous violations at Pulse nightclub that hindered the escape and rescue of shooting victims on June 12, 2016. One of these records was a 2004 letter from planning director Dean Grandin, which states that with the addition of a dance floor, stage, and nightclub type lighting, Pulse was not consistent with, nor did it meet the conditions of, its conditional use approval by the Municipal Planning Board. This is not only because of the modified layout of the building, but also because, as the letter states, a martini bar and restaurant, which Pulse was approved to be, is considered an eating and drinking establishment, while a nightclub or dance hall is considered indoor recreation and therefore requires an additional CUP. So, we were surprised when on June 18th, 2021, the city released a statement stating, The city does not have a designation in our code for nightclubs. They are classified as eating and drinking establishments. We thought, maybe the city changed their municipal code definitions at some point between 2010 and 2016 when the shooting happened. We have records from 2010 that reiterate the 2004 letter, so we know that the same rules were in place in 2010. We looked at the current 2021 municipal code for the city of Orlando, and sure enough, the definitions have not changed since 2004. To this day, nightclubs are not considered eating and drinking establishments. They are considered indoor recreation. This means the city lied when they said that nightclubs are classified as eating and drinking establishments. It also means that Pulse was indeed operating as a nightclub in violation of its approved use. The city is lying now, in 2021, while Pulse owner Barbara Poma personally profits from the mass shooting by being CEO of the One Pulse Foundation, which, with the help of a $10 million tourism tax grant from Orange County, is trying to turn the site of the shooting into Orlando's next tourist attraction. Our application today is a request for leaders in the tourism community to provide lead funding to ensure its success. Let's consider what our visitation could look like. Currently at our site now, we have over 300 visitors a day. What we loved most about this Forbes article, what is, it was a business publication who understood the economic impact of our project. She has already placed a gift shop on the site of the massacre. Barbara Poma looks survivors in the face, knowing that she ran a business in violation of city codes with unpermitted renovations that hindered their escape and rescue. Twenty people were murdered on the unpermitted dance floor that Dean Grandin asked Rosario Poma to remove. One person was murdered in the unpermitted patio that was fenced in by an unpermitted fence. Had Pulse owners operated Pulse legally and in compliance, the death toll would not have been what it was. The Orlando Sentinel reported on the unpermitted fence in 2016 and the fact that the city never issued a citation, despite knowing it was a code violation. Still, in the wake of the shooting, no criminal investigation and no inspection of the building was done for the sake of the victims and wounded survivors. It appears that the city of Orlando would rather avoid implicating themselves than tell the truth to Pulse victims and the public. In 2021, the city of Orlando continues to lie about her and how we're moving forward in the diversity tourism marketing space.